Okay, this is the dl2man.de website, which is the homepage for the True SDX. Um, we'll go over that in a minute. This is the the radio. I built one of these, and uh, and I got to tell you, this is pretty nice. It's a QRP radio. It fits mostly in my hand. I mean, if I if I took off the BNC adapter, I think I could close my hand around most of it, but the uh, but the knob. Um, very slick. Works mostly like our uh, our radios do that uh, we do normal everyday stuff on. Uh, a little bit trimmed down on some of the menu options, which is fine. Uh, great for CW and for SSB. This little guy actually does SSB. And one of the things that makes it truly stand out is that the SSB features are all in software. This, this radio did not originally have SSB, but now does because of a software patch. That is phenomenal. So, um, what can I tell you? The... Um, before we get into this, I'm going to show you the build. Um, I ordered a kit. Um, that this is not the kit that I originally ordered. I ordered the kit, and it turned out to have some subpar parts. So I ordered another kit, built it, and uh, I, I now have a I now have a box of parts on standby. If you uh, if you want some spare parts and are willing to uh, do some testing, I've got a, a mostly complete radio. I will put in your hands, but uh, this one I will not. It is mine. Um, and uh, and I'm having a blast with it so far. Um, let's see. Let's just real quickly look at this. We've got a a, uh, a screen that's a, a fairly decent OLED. Um, I don't have it plugged in, so I'm not turning it on. Uh, there's a little speaker right here. The speaker's not fabulous, but it's better than you expect. The microphone works pretty good um, with uh, audio and mic jacks off to the side. We have a push to talk and key button. Uh, we can plug our keyer into the mic jack. The menu and enter buttons here um, do a couple of things. When you're just operating the radio, the enter button changes modes. Uh, if you press down on the button, you can change the audio, uh, or rather you can change the, uh, the volume, which affects uh, noise sensitivity. Uh, let's see, what else? We, we have a main power port as well as a USB port. The PA is not power adapter. That is, that is for a PA speaker. Um, once, you, once you plug in, APA, it's going to divert power from other audio, so know what you want to have happen. Uh, do, do not plug in the USB and the, uh, the main power. I, I don't know what will happen, so I haven't done that. Uh, the radio can be turned on without a dummy load. I, don't, I still don't recommend that, just as a matter of habit. Um, I don't do that. My, uh, my power source, I'm using an Amazon uh, talent cell. Um, these have different names. They come with a charger, and uh, it's just a 12-volt battery. It should give me a solid six hours of operation. So we are talking QRP. Uh, we can take in somewhere somewhere around six volts all the way up to possibly 16. And um, let's take a little look here. What was I going to tell you? Uh, QRP power. We can take five volts from USB. It will work with five volts, but that's going to be a real low, low wattage output. And... Um, if you, if you want one of these radios, the best way to get started is to go to DL2, where am I? Where am I? DL2man.de. And then over here in the very first menu item, scroll on down to the bottom where it says where to buy. Click on that. There are a number of options here uh, for, for places that you can get uh, kits and fully assembled radios also. The Amazon link, uh, the last time I looked, did not have assembled radios, but the eBay link did to, uh, to indicate that you want a, uh, an assembled radio. Click the assembled option, and that will raise your price about $50, but uh, you'll, you'll be just as happy as anybody else, I'm sure. Uh, I believe all of these options are the same people, Hai Sun Chin and Sunny Yang. I, th I think they are operating all of the sales. Uh, they they certainly are operating the, the sales with the Shinzen, excuse me, the Shinzen company, LTI. Um, and this tells you what it takes to be, uh, to be an approved company providing the, uh, the radio. DL2 man is very strict about who he lets in and who he doesn't. And one, the, the first kit that I bought, the, uh, the company that provided the substandard parts, they are no longer approved. I, they were either approved or in the approval process. They are not here, so I'm not even going to mention their name uh, because I, I read the stinky words back and forth between each other, and, and that company fell on their face. Let's see. 
If you get one of these from one of these companies, it's going to set you back about uh, $100. If you get it from this eBay link, Yuli QH store, let me get that right up there, Yuli QH store, then uh, what happens is you pay your $99 or $150 and you get your radio and you get a, uh, a correct power plug. I don't know that you get that with Amazon. I was looking at their parts and I couldn't really tell. I don't want to do that right now though. Uh, let's see. All the documentation is on the assembly page. Literally, you follow his steps, the videos. There's some wonderful, wonderful tools here to help you make your first radio, if this is your first radio. Um, and even if you don't have a, uh, even if you don't have a uh, nano, you can probably just do the assembly, and you're going to come out fine. The way that you assemble the options might require a little thought. Um, I think this is the default. I could be mistaken. Um, I think though that this is how the radio is, is configured hardware-wise. Stick with that because after some reading, I think in order to switch your bands in the firmware, you might have to put another uh, RF board in. There are two boards. There's an RF board and a, uh, a control board, and you're going to see that. Lots of information here. And uh, you don't have to dive into that if you don't really want to. That's that's fine. But what I will call your attention to is uh, da, 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 the I-bomb build of materials. There are two of these, one for each board. And what you can do, if you're buying the parts yourself, you can you can go work work through here. And as you buy them, get them ordered. You can mark them as sourced, and then you know that you have bought them. Uh, when you're assembling, you can mark the parts as placed. And that way, when you get to the bottom and all your checkboxes are checked, you know that you have a finished radio. If you don't know where to put something, oh, I'm sorry, I should be putting my cursor over here. So there's the sourced column, there's the placed column, and an example of what I was talking about. Let's look for R25. R25 is way over here, and the darker dot, I'm assuming, indicates polarity. The uh, I guess that would be the long lead, but I don't think resistors are... Pull, well, yeah, anyway, you, you might, if you trim leads, whatever. In any case, um, this is a very interactive map of where to put your parts on the board. The surface mount parts are already going to be on the board when you order it, and the, uh, the other stuff is, uh, is for you to attach and is not complicated, although I will tell you some steps along the way. All right, let's, uh, let's go take a peek at what goes into building the radio. All right, now Solder Monkey's gonna walk us through these parts. We're gonna start with the little speaker that goes on there and the surprisingly good microphone. Uh, three audio jacks, they only go on one way so you can't screw it up. Uh, same with the push buttons, there are three of those. And the, the sandwich connectors uh, the to put the two pins boards for together. The sandwich the connectors. Three MOSFETs Let me stop for that. the control board. And uh, the, this is a programming port. It's a set of leads. And those are standoff pins that I use to stand off the OLED screen. Um, important thing here. You have to put that in the right way because you don't want to interfere with the sandwich. Um, there are five relays to go with our five toroids that I'll show you later. The SMA connector, which is where we'll attach the antenna, only goes on one way, so pay careful attention uh, to the connectors. They, uh, they don't go on the way that you think they do at first look, and you have to you'll notice that you have to rotate it 90 degrees. So uh, be aware of that. Everything will work out fine. You can't do it wrong because the, uh, the connectors are there. Um, you see that little tab? That tab on the control knob um, is going to have to come off because it will get in the way of the 3D printed case. Unless you're using your own case, take your diags and just snip that off take off the nut and the washer. You're not going to need those until you assemble the case. And uh, now let's see what Solder Monkey's looking at over here. 
it, it's not the speaker wire. It must be the Colgate because unbeknownst to everyone else, Colgate is a fine cream for burnt fingertips. Um, not that you will burn your fingertips, but Solder Monkey just might. If you need to go to the hospital, don't bother with the Colgate. Now here is the, uh, the control board with the surface mount parts on it. That's uh, how it comes in the mail, uh, or UPS, or however you get it. The, uh, the programmer I was telling you about is in the lower right. The, uh, the um, power is in the upper left. And the sandwich connection will be that right there in the upper right. Let's see now, what else? The OLED screen will go right next to that programmer. And the, uh, I don't know if, uh, if you have seen this before, but the connectors going around the edge are the, uh, the audio. And Solder Monkey has one right in his hand there. Is that, that's an audio port, yep. So what he's, what he's trying to figure out is which way that goes because it only goes one way. This is one of those things, if you look at that I-bomb diagram and hover over the part number uh, or the part label, you'll uh, see it highlighted on the schematic where to place it. Solder Monkey's figuring it out. The J6 audio goes in right, come on. Come on, you can do it. Solder Monkey's having a hard time because he's looking at the back side. He's looking at the back side. He's going to have to turn that little part over. Turn it over. There we go. So J7, J6, and J9, they're all the same part. Just put it on there. And then we'll, we'll tack that on with some solder. Now, when, when you place parts and you know you've got to go to the back side of the board, what happens? What happens? You know it's going to happen. And, yeah, we had to edit that out. All those parts fell off. Tack those on. Put a good little bead on there. Make sure that you make a connection. And then go back and fill up that hole. I'm not usually a big fan of filling up the holes with the solder uh, because you sometimes get bridges, but this is this is a project that you really need to fill up the holes. And uh, with everything but the relays, you should go back and, and clean everything off, clip those leads down. Uh, I don't mind if, I, uh, if our solder monkey here leaves behind a tail because that just helps older solder monkeys see where to clip the leads. Oh, solder monkey was fast. I didn't actually see what solder monkey just put on there. But it's okay. Oh, it's the programmer. Yeah, just drop some solder in those holes. It's going to be fine. Make sure it does make a connection. And if, if the, uh, the board has a funny smell or tackiness to it, uh, work that off with some Scotch-Brite or something, um, or an eraser. Mine did not have. You know, that, that sticky flux smell. Okay, and... Solder Monkey is figuring out where to put that control knob. It only goes one way. There you go. It actually only takes about an hour of real time to, uh, to put this together. But Solder Monkey took uh, a whole lot of breaks and uh, stopped many times to reread the documentation. 
as as solder monkey's dementia grows and he can't remember what the uh, documentation says uh, it, it's much easier for solder monkey to go back and follow the videos so two capacitors have to pop off here that uh, just heat those up and drop them off those two black specks that look like pepper yeah and that's that's clearly laid out in the instructions before you put on the uh, the microphone you gotta know which lead on that microphone is ground the best way to tell is to test connectivity between the lead and the uh, and the case on the uh, mi microphone component and yes uh, solder monkey broke his ground connector so he's having to use a uh, his thumb there that's it right there that that works that works that's it that's it uh-huh get get a pin and mark that high dollar harbor freight door prize there hard at work okay there it is let's look at that uh, two nondescript leads I really don't know if polarity ma matters on a microphone but it's probably best using the clamp just to hold that on there and avoid any burnt fingertips microphone is attached And now for the screen. The OLED screen is going to need some power. Those capacitors that we popped off, their absence tells the uh, little Arduino board there, hey, I'm, I'm just going to use power off of the main board. Um, I'm not going to get power through anywhere else. So uh, we're popping in a little jumper there carry power across um, not exactly the way this little guy was designed but they saved a tiny bit of money by making us do just a little bit of extra work which is fine on these little OLED screens jumpers in place solder monkey needed a drink I hear Radio Shack is coming back. Got to find out about that. So the buttons are on. The audio is on. Those two standoffs. Tack those on there. Solder Monkey is going to lift that up. Put both standoffs on before attaching it down to the, uh, the control board. And it only fits one way. Yeah. Ooh, I saw that. I bet that hurt like the Dickens. Colgate. Possibly a Band-Aid. Now, Solder Monkey is going to have to tack that down. Oh, he dropped the screen. Fortunately, he's using the patented high-dollar cardboard non-scratch mat. And when all else fails, you can just use that high-dollar Harbor Freight door prize as a uh, project holder. This is a surprisingly slippery component. There, now Solder Monkey has that thing partly connected, making the, uh, the four pins at the bottom of that little board connected, again, through the opposite side. The way this comes together, 
Oh, that's a solder bridge. You got to clean up that solder bridge, solder monkey. The way this is going to come together, what you would normally think of as the top is the back side of the board. Now we're going to put in, Solder Monkey is going to put in that uh, connector that we're using as a bridge connector, but it's got to go in from the other side so that the, um, it's, it's not intuitive, so that the uh, boards can sandwich together. So it's, as our intuition tells us, that's the back side of the board, but it's the bottom side. It points to the bottom side of the radio, which leaves the longer leads for the, uh, or for the shorter leads for the uh, tacking down and the, uh, the longer leads to go into the uh, connector. Solder Monkey needs a little bit of magnification. Tack that down with just one or two leads. Uh, make sure that the pins are straight. Um, they will, in fact, move until uh, the whole project is done because uh, they, they respond a lot to heat. And once everything is tacked down and right, go back and Make sure that there's enough solder in each one of those holes without making a solder bridge, make a true solder joint. Try like the Dickens not to get a dry solder. Ah, he must hurt his finger again. There it is. A little bit of solder climbing up there. It's going to have to be cleaned off. Getting a drink again, eh? Now we're putting in some double throw dual pole relays. So these are, are a little longer legged relays. Um, they actually work just a little bit better for this type of project because you have a little bit to bend. If you had the short leg plug style, uh, it, it wouldn't be real easy to, to solder this down and um, something that that uh, Solder Monkey failed to notice, you don't have to clip the leads. You don't have to clip the, uh, the leads on the relays. Just leave them there. DL2 Man says that uh, that actually is part of his design to leave them at full length. So, while they're, they ended up clipped off, it's okay. Either way. Uh, SMA adapter, you saw that. Here's the MOSFET going on. Solder down. Another one and another one. Where's the other one at? Oh, he was too fast for me. Okay. Now the other side of that bridge connector. This is on the RF board. It's real solder porn going on here. Fear not, there actually is a, uh, a cup of flux nearby. This isn't as sloppy as, as it looks like at first.
rehearse everything as you put it on, test it, move it, dry it. Tack. This is a toroid. I didn't I did the toroids off screen. So um, solder monkey only has to solder down here and there. This this is why you have uh, this is a transformer. So you have a little bit of a benefit um, in uh, in not having to worry about the dummy load. Um, on the other side, you'll notice this guy is uh, soldered in at an angle. And that's because there is an additional turn going through the middle of the toroid. These toroids are so tiny, I don't think you can see it on the camera. But um, when you get to the point of, of assembling that, just know that you're going to have an additional lead that's going to come from there and run through the middle of that toroid, making it a, a uh, full-fledged transformer. Doing a little bit of extra work. And there are two different kinds of uh, toroids in this kit. There are red and there are black. The black are going to be facing the, uh, the more difficult power demands and the uh, the red are strictly for antenna bands, and there there's your your diagram. There there have to be two of those for the antenna, and in the very middle there is a major major power transformer with lots and lots of windings. Now we're going to put that together, and it's going to be easy, right? It's always easy putting these printed circuit boards together. Actually, that wasn't too bad, but they're not really together yet. They're going to need some adjustment. Oh, solder monkey, what did you do? Those pins don't look perfectly straight. Going to have to fix that. So the uh, the shorter pins there on the back, that is for the purpose of uh, keeping the sandwich as tight and as close together as possible. <laughs> yeah, Solder Monkey got a couple of cuts and burns. Now there's there's an example of that uh, that wire going through the middle. I I may have pulled this in out of order. I sure did. So he's he's pointing out that he's going to have to run that uh, toroid in at an angle, and then put another wire through the winding as a straight line. And there will be two of them there for the antenna. Uh-huh. Yeah. We know. Thanks, Otter Monkey. That's the black one. Yep, we know. The black ones are for transformers. Red ones are for the bands. And the difference is whether or not that is a solid core or um, uh, ferrite powder.
after all of those toroids are in place, you uh, still have all of the wires sticking through. So just leave them sticking through, give them a little twist, and, uh, and then go back and solder the scraped connections. When you make toroids, you have to scrape off the ends of the wire, and the wire uh, is covered in enamel, which will prevent a good solder from taking place. It may look okay, but it won't work if uh, the enamel is still there. Why are they twisted? Don't worry about it. We're just using that to anchor the toroid in place. And when everything is soldered up, we'll go back and clean those off. Uh, Solder Monkey has a pair of dikes there. He'll go through and give those a good clip. And fill that hole in. Fill it in. There you go. Solder Monkey's learning. It doesn't matter how sloppy this side of the board gets because we're going to cut it all off. Except, of course, the leads of the relays which Solder Monkey already cut off. We'll, we'll let him slide on this one. I don't know if Solder Monkey's getting another drink or if he's getting another Band-Aid. There we go. Clip, 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 clip. Clean up those wires. The toroid uh, leads are a big deal. We want them cleaned up. We want them off the board. We want them short. And we want them to have good solder connections, good joints. If there's a dull, dry solder joint, that's going to have to be fixed. Yeah. Now, to make that sandwich fit a little bit tighter, we might need some kind of an adjustment tool. But Solder Monkey has an adjustment tool just for making uh, printed circuit boards go together. I would suggest a little hand vise from the, uh, from the Radio Shack, though. That's probably a little better deal. We put it together just by putting on the uh, 3D printed parts. They fit together kind of funny, but they do fit together. Four screws. And we put the nut on and the washer. And this is the one that I found out had a bad chip on it. It had some other problems, but the bad chip was pretty much a uh, game killer. Um, and that's what led to me getting a new kit to build. Okay. On the Amazon website, this battery said that it had a visual indicator. Well, that visual indicator is not on the battery like a... Uh, like a Hercules or a, uh, a modern DeWalt battery. No, that visual indicator is on the charger. So you have to plug in the charger in order to see if that battery is charged. The battery does come with some uh, blade wires, some pigtails. And so I pop those on there, soldered on a handy dandy little connector. Uh, as a matter of practice, now this is this is my my second kit that does not have the bricked uh, chip. I, re, I have a rebuilt kit because, or I have a freshly built kit because that surface mount chip is actually harder to replace than just getting a new board. So I'll take off the BNC adapter and I will put on. 
the appropriate adapter for my dummy load because that is the right thing to do. It doesn't have to be done, but it's the right thing to do. And does it work? I know it does, but let's go ahead. I know it does work, but let's go ahead and just snap this little guy in. There we go. And you can tell that I have already uh, got this working. I'm going to press the button and raise the audio. I don't think there's anything that would ever come in on a on a dummy load, but let's change. Oh, <laughs> there's some kind of signal there. Let's get, oh dear, oh dear. There we go. One more. All right. When you get the, uh, get your own firmware, you will have a, uh, an opportunity to enter your call sign. And you should do that. Um, while the radio will boot up and operate, it will only operate in receive mode until you get the new firmware. Now let me show you how to do that. When I got my kit, it came with a bootloader. And I think just about all of them will, but they will not come with the correct firmware. The firmware, the default firmware is receive only. You can't transmit with it. So you need to uh, get your own firmware. And you get that with this 3B. 3A you don't have to do because it was already put on by the, uh, the company that did the kit. And so at 3B, Plug in a USB B cable to your uh, to your radio and into your computer. Your package should have a serial number on it with instructions. Type that serial number in here on this box. Type in your call sign and hit download. And if you've got Windows, the software you want to use is AVR Dudes with two S's. There's a link there. And you're going to want the driver that is linked to here. So that should make Win Windows 10 work the way it's supposed to. I use Mac and Linux. Both of them have the same solution. I used, whoop, come back here. Okay. The first thing I did was I did a brew install LS USB. The uh, Ubuntu already has that command. And that, that gives you the ability to neatly and concisely list USB devices. That will correspond to something over in your dev directory forward slash dev and it will probably begin with a cu dot so let's just see what is there on my mac it will it will probably be a tty on ubuntu okay now, I only have an iPhone and a Bluetooth, but my radio is not plugged in right now. It would show up with a serial modem, USB serial, um, dash 14050, I believe. Your hardware might differ. I think that is a UART number. Don't worry about that. The next thing was to brew, type the right word, brew install 
AVR dude. And that will get your program loaded to handle uh, loading firmware onto your radio. And the command line. Okay, now this is going to be interesting. The command line. I'm going to speak this so that you can write it down when you need to. Don't bother until you need to. This is a mess. AVR dude dash C Arduino dash P M three two eight P as in Paul dash B one one five two zero zero. That's a baud rate dash uppercase P slash dev slash US uh, CU dot USB serial dash 1420 I was mistaken it's 1420 dash uppercase U and this is the location of the firmware wherever you put it uh, don't bother trying to get mine it won't work for you it's signed uh, in accordance with the hardware and uh, I will put more documentation in the description box. Uh, I mean, uh, on uh, on the club's website for uh, for you to get that. So, uh, take another quick look here. This little doer works so well. It's got a CW decoder, and man, that thing it's it's a little too sensitive. It's trying to decode static. Let me see if I turn it down a couple of notches. There we go. So it's decoding all of those E's. This is a decent decoder. I, I was hammering around and listening to uh, some CW. Didn't understand the abbreviations, but uh, it, was, it was loads of fun. Um, so I'm going to build an antenna and listen in on the world. I hope you all decide that this is something you want to take a crack at. Um, I do have one kit on hand that is good and I will sell it uh, straight across but um, the, uh, the scrambled parts version from the previous kit company. Uh, that one's a giveaway. Anybody that wants that one just let me know. All right thank you so much. I am going to unplug this and that's going to turn off the radio. That's all there is to turning it off or turning it on. And uh, I hope you all have a good one, 73s, and have a good evening.